Heavenly Father, we come into thy presence and we humbly ask you to um, open our eyes to your word as we look into your word and reveal to us who you really are in this very difficult time in the history of the world where sin is a reason to celebrate and God is being hidden in everywhere we go by the power of man. But we know that you are almighty and you will overcome. Help us live in this life, uh, uncomp uncompromised life, while um, living here and bringing glory to your name. We pray in the name of Jesus. Amen. As you know, we have started a lesson in the book of um, Daniel. Daniel chapter 1, you will do well if you open your Bible to Daniel chapter 1. We've looked at um, what happened as Daniel uh, made up his mind, the Bible says, not to compromise, not to compromise on the lifestyles of Chaldeans and the Babylonians. First thing that happened, my friends, is that he was able to proclaim his faith without shame and with boldness, without shame and boldness. When we compromise, uh, we do not have the ability to proclaim an unashamed, with unashamed boldness, our faith. We tend to be uh, hiding because of the compromise we've done and uh, we, we become weak in that manner. But Daniel proclaimed exactly how he felt. He said, I cannot eat because I will be defiled, no excuses. Second thing we see is that Daniel, as a result of living an uncompromised life, he had a um, standard higher than norm, a higher standard, an uncommon standard, where he was able to withstand uh, the compromise of the king, as the king wanted him to participate um, in eating of the uh, king's food and drinking of the king's wine. And so therefore Daniel didn't even want to associate with that. And he asked for water only and told me something different. And we was able to hold a standard higher than norm. And we have to li li live this life in an uncompromised fashion. But we cannot be if Daniel was with the, with the Babylonians every day, eating and drinking and, and enjoying life, uh, when the time came to test, he would fail. His standards was always higher than normal. And we need to live a life, my friends, um, that has a standard higher than the world. Yes, the Bible says live in the world, but not be of the world. And Daniel does that very well. Uh, a non-compromising life does not play on the edge of what is right, but chooses the highest standard in life. Chooses the highest standard in life. The third thing we saw that therefore when Daniel was faithful, God granted Daniel favor and compassion in the side of the commander of the officials. And so we see that God is protecting Daniel in verse 9. He, he creates love for Daniel in the heart of these pagan people. Why was the chief official good to Daniel? Why? Because God granted Daniel favor in his eyes. Sabab Ivilla Allah al Daniel Shapakat or Rahme Gamrab Mahemanat Babalaya. So God will protect you as we are faithful to his word and live an uncompromising life. You put yourself in God's hands, my friends. You don't have to compromise to save yourself. 
And then we saw the fourth thing, which was very important, that Daniel was persistent. He didn't give up. When the prince came and said, hey, listen, it's my head on the line. It is good that Ashmanaz has given you favor, but it's my head. You have to eat this mortadella sandwich here. You know, um, that won't hurt you. Nobody will know. I won't say to any, anything to anyone. But Daniel persisted. He didn't give up. He, he reasoned with the, with the keeper. He told him, hey, I will not compromise. This is my standard. And therefore, we found a way to say, look, give me 10 days. And that's unusual test. Give me 10 days. And in 10 days, I will show you how it's going to be. And so therefore, he was persistent in everything he did. If you compromise, my friend, if we compromise in life, we cannot be persistent. Daniel did not change his mind. There is no grumpy spirit here. There is no rebellion here in Daniel. When they said, no, we can't do it, Daniel didn't say, okay, we tried hard enough. I guess God doesn't want us to do this. Let's compromise. No. There is, there is this unhindered persistence in Daniel that we need to learn from. As a result of that persistence, we see that there's a key to everything, and that was the unblemished faith. <laughs> we read in verse 12, I want to read it again. Please test your servants for 10 days. Let us be given some vegetables and eat to eat and water to drink. You see, look at amazing faith Daniel has. He is staying faithful to the word of God. And he's saying, look, I don't want a meat that is good for the Jewish to eat. I want something totally different. So you will see the glory and the power of God. We will bring glory to God, not to ourselves. And that's what unblemished faith does. It looks to Christ. It gives glory to Christ. It doesn't take glory for themselves. And it has faith that God will come through. What do you mean water and vegetables? Can't you eat some meats that are cleaned by the Jewish faith? Yes, I can, but I will not eat them because I want to bring glory to God. I want everybody to know that we had nothing to do with no meat and no wine, and here we are. And therefore, people will not look at Daniel, but look at God. Their, their appearance will be observed, and their appearance um, would be better than the appearance of the other youth that were there. And that's why Psalm 62 is very important. Truly, my soul waits upon God. For him comes, for from him comes my salvation. We have to wait, Lord, unto the Lord. If there is an hindrance in your way, don't give up. Don't compromise. Have faith like Daniel did. And the scripture says, from him comes my salvation. And then when he had this unbelievable faith that God will come through, this takes tremendous courage, my friend. Boldness. Because when you live a pure life, when you live a holy life, when you strive to be like Jesus, when you believe God, and God is going to honor, and God is going to protect the one who is faithful is very important. We have to honor God. And they honored God because their heart were pure. They didn't do anything to bring shame to the name of God. How do I and you live in this world? Do we give up? Do we have no faith in God? Are we like the disciples that says, we cannot feed these 5,000 people because they were looking at themselves, their strength, their financial strength, their power? Or are you looking at Christ, who is the creator of this world? 
So number six, we learned last week that there was an unusual test. So they went to this keeper and says, look, you will be, give us 10 days. In 10 days, you will test us and you will see how we are. And then we will take it from there. In verse 15, it says, and the end of 10 days, after they had drank water and vegetables, I ate vegetables, their appearance seemed better. And they were fatter, looking better, that means healthier, than all the youths who have been eating the king's choice food. Wow. They weren't looking better because they ate water and vegetables. You and I can eat vegetables for 10 days and drink water. We will not look as good, perhaps, as these kids. But they did because God. Why? Because God directed them because God intervened and made it possible. So the overseer, when he saw that after 10 days, these kids, these youngsters, these counselors look good, he continued giving them water and vegetables. And that's an opening for you and I to share the gospel to the unbeliever. They won the battle. And God opens the door for us to share the gospel with the unbelievers. And I'm sure they did. I'm sure they did. And today we come to the number seven lesson. What happens when you and I live an uncompromising life? What is the result of it? Number seven result is that we will have unmeasurable blessing. <laughs> Unmeasurable blessing. What do you mean? Let's read verse 17 together, Daniel 1. You'll see this. As for these four youths, God gave the knowledge. And we're looking at the blessings here now. For these four youths, God gave the knowledge and the intelligence in every branch of literature and wisdom. Wow. How did they become so wise? How did they know the intelligence of every branch of literature that existed? How? Were they smart? Did they score well in SAT scores? No. God gave them. You see? God gave them. And then it says in verse 17, Daniel even understood on top of all of this, all kinds of vision and dreams. You're talking here about something that is way beyond the Chaldean educational system. Daniel is educated not only in all the Jewish wisdom, but all the Chaldean with wisdom. And beyond that, he has been given the divine, divine wisdom. Wisdom. Why? God gave it to him. This wisdom does not come by you and I talking to pastors. God has to open our eyes. Because it's heavenly. Now he understood all the visions and dreams from God. And all of these are gifts from God to an uncompromising life. I really feel that the only way, now listen to this one, please. I only feel the only way to come to knowledge and the only way to come to wisdom and the true biblical understanding is to come through the path of uncompromising life. God blesses you. He gives divine wisdom. Babylon, Babylonians were smart. Babylon was the center of knowledge. And they had advanced sciences. They had the wisdom of Babylons and Chaldeans. 
the great libraries of the world, etc., etc. God helped them to learn it all. Help these four to learn it all. And then beyond that, God gave Daniel the ability to understand visions and dreams. Why? Oh, because God has planted Daniel there for a reason. God hasn't just mistakenly put Daniel there. No, God has a plan. Everything that's happening in Daniel's life, there's a reason behind it. God's fingers are at work. And this prepares Daniel, of course, for the prophecies that unfold in this book. What tremendous blessing to be used by God when you and I live an uncompromising life. What tremendous blessing. They would know what they needed to know. They would have wisdom from God. Oh, it's good to read your science books. It's good to get a degree in education and in school and science. A lot of young kids today want to be doctors. Great. Engineers. Great. Physicists. Awesome. That is the Babylonian wisdom, as I call it. But God has to give us the divine wisdom that is in the scriptures. Let's go to verse 18 of Daniel 1. Verse 18 says, then at the end of the days, which the king has specified for presenting them. Now the time comes for the test. Three years are over. They need to come stand before the king. They need to pass a test. And at the end of the days, which the king has specified for presenting them, the commander of the officials presented them before Nebuchadnezzar. The Khartad Yomane, Mireva Melka, Muyele Rab Haimena, Kam Nahod Nasa. Three years have gone by now, and they're examined by the king. They came in and stood before the king. This is graduation time, and these are the elites of the elites. These are the brainiacs of the whole world of that time. Amazing. And look at verse 19, Daniel 1, verse 19. The king talked with them. It's an interview. He wants to see how smart they are. It is not just how you scored, but I want to now talk to you because you will rule over my people. I want you, you to keep peace. I want to see how you behave. Right? It's an interview. And keep talk with them. And look what it says in verse 19. And out of them all, none, out of them all, not one was found like Daniel. Amazing. Not one of them was found like Daniel, Hananiah, Mishael and Azariah. Nobody liked them. Amazing. So they entered the king's personal service. They became the king's personal advisors. Amazing. All of these people followed the rules of the king. And none of them were as good as these four. These four were blessed with wisdom and blessed with blessing in a pagan culture. My friend, God will bless you in this world. You are working. You are being asked to compromise. You don't. You are faithful. And God will bless you. They're blessed with wisdom, blessed with blessings in a pagan culture. What is the path to success? in a pagan culture? What do you think you should do to get ahead? What do you think you should do to get a promotion? What do you think you should do to everybody knows that you are, you are an amazing, amazing employee? What do you think you should do? Well, I'm telling you, the scripture is very clear. 
It is a path of an uncompromising life. It is the path of holiness, godliness, purity. That is the path you take to be successful in a pagan culture. It is contrary to what you may be thinking. But that is what the scripture is telling us. Verse 20 of Daniel 1. As for every manner of wisdom and understanding about which the king consult, uh, uh, consulted them, he found them, I like this, ten times better than all the mag magicians who were in all of his real. Amazing, right? Ten times better. Not a little bit better. Ten times better. Ten times better than the best. Why? Because they were smart. Because they had the Chaldean learning. Yes and yes. On top of that, the other also had the Chaldean learning too, didn't they? But they had God who gave them the wisdom. Allah God gave them wisdom. They had the wisdom of the Old Testament and the wisdom that God gave them. The wisdom is not about some imaginary thing. It's in the word of God. How do you reach a position of significance, someone may say. I can't do that here in this world. God will put you in the highest position that he deems for you when you're the most uncompromising person. You don't have to find your way there through compromise. If so, you'll find yourself in a cave, sad and miserable. I suppose you can compromise and achieve something that you wanted by selling your soul or compromising your soul or your belief wherever you need to, to achieve what you want. But if you want to be where God wants you to be, you don't compromise and you let him lift you up. If you compromise and you think you achieved something you wanted to achieve, you will never know what God had planned for you. But if you want to be where God wants you to be, now God wanted the Israel, Israelites in the desert, right? That is not a fun place to be. But if you want to be where God wants you to be, you don't compromise. And then you let him lift you up. And that's the blessing God gave these four youngsters. Ten times better than the rest. And the last point was that Daniel had unlimited influence. An uncompromising life Unlimited influence. Verse 21. And Daniel, Daniel 121. And Daniel continued until the first year of Cyrus the king. Can you believe it? 70 years. 70 years. Daniel was there. And probably Daniel's last, by the way, he was appointed prime minister. And his last great achievement, do you know what it was? It was to negotiate the release of, of the captive captives so they could return to their land when he was with the Persian Empire. He did the negotiations. And when you read Ezra chapter 1 through 4, you will see that they're coming back to their land and you feel Daniel in the background. You see, God put him there and he waited 70 years 
where Daniel will negotiate the return of his people to their land. My friend, if you want your Christian children to get to a place of importance or prominence, should they compromise? Will you teach them to lie? Will you teach them to do un-Christian un things? No. I believe there has to be an uncompromising godliness and a divine purpose on God's part to put them there. We got to teach our killed children to live a holy life. But the real challenge today may not be along the lines of God's purpose as much as it is along the line of finding an uncompromising man. It's hard to find uncompromising men. It's hard to find Daniel and his three friends. Difficult. Very difficult. But I can tell you this. An uncompromising life with unashamed boldness that calls us to a higher standard that depends on a godly protection with unhindered persistence built on an unblemished faith that can face unusual testing, resulting in immeasurable blessing and unlimited influence in your life. And perhaps we can say in summary, determine not to compromise and leave to God the results, right? And let him put you where he wants. What you can never gain by trying, by manipulating, or by compromising, God will give you for not compromising. And I think and that's the highest place of his holy purpose for your life. If you take matters in your own hands, if you forsake God, God will forsake you. And this is the lesson of Daniel and his friends. And as you close chapter one, I want to quickly get into chapter two a little bit today, not too much, and get you ready for next week because it's going to be an amazing lesson. Most people, as I said to you before, have a price. A truly uncompromising man is very hard to find. But that's exactly the kind of servant God is looking for. So he can do his work, God's work. When it comes to very special tasks, when it comes to very great opportunities, God wants people that do not compromise with character so he can use them in his ministry. Now, Daniel is that person, and Daniel is getting prepped for what is about to happen to him. Chapter 1 was necessary. Now, Daniel is that person. Daniel was a man who wouldn't compromise. Daniel is a man who had amazing character, and we looked at all of them. And God uses Daniel as a vehicle through which he reveals the redemptive plan through a prophecy on all human history. Isn't it amazing? God gave him the ability to understand visions and dreams. God made him a prophet. Why? So he can reveal to us the redemptive plan of God. What a calling. And what a privilege. Can you imagine if Daniel had compromised? We would not have the book of Daniel. We would not have the Israelites released from the, from the uh, power of the uh, Medes and Persians. What a calling. What a privilege. In chapter 2, we will see this calling unfolding. Chapter 1 has been preparing Daniel for chapter two. My friend, you may be in a tough spot today. And I know many of us are. Many of us are. But never forget, there's a chapter two. 
God has set Daniel in the right place for the right time. We have seen the character of Daniel that equips him to be God's man for the assignment. We have learned that Daniel has set an uncompromising standard for his own life. We have learned that Daniel had an amazing commitment to righteous character. Are you committed, my friend, to live a righteous life? Or do we just talk about it and walk away? My friend, we need to commit to live a righteous life and to have a righteous character. And because of that, he becomes God's chosen man for this task. Now, let's read Daniel 1.17 again before we close. As for these four youths, and that would be Daniel, Hananiah, Mishael, and Azariah. And for these four youths, God gave them knowledge and skill in all learning and wisdom. And listen to this. And Daniel had, above all of that, understanding in all visions and dreams. Now, that little statement at the end of verse 17 sets Daniel apart from the rest. Daniel was given the unique capacity to reveal visions and dreams. In other words, Daniel was to be the instrument through whom God would speak because the scriptures were not completed. God spoke through prophets audibly. Today, God does not do that any longer. What God meant to tell us, everything has been revealed in the scriptures. We do not need additional revelation, my friend. We have the final, complete, inerrant revelation of God in the scripture. Daniel, though, was set to be the instrument through God, through whom God will speak. This amazing teenager, in fact, is given the most complete prophetic picture of human history ever given in the Old Testament. An amazing prophecy that begins to unfold in verse 31 of chapter 2. Not only he was gifted, but because he had such a character that he would receive God's highest service. And I want to close with 2 Timothy 2.21. His life was usable by God. My friend, imagine if Daniel was not around. Imagine Daniel lost himself in that pagan society. He would not be around. He would not be used. His life was usable. 2 Timothy 2.21 tells us that we are to purge we are to be purged in order that we might be vessels fit for the master's use. Did you get that? In Nashatcha Dahila Yanu Mandiane, she have a mana ikara duchya shika mapla mare. If a man to purge himself. So he might be a vessel fit for the master's use. Amazing word, fit for the master's use. Such a vessel was Daniel. God put Daniel in a position to influence the world. And it all started when he was a teenager in a pagan world and he stood and did not compromise he put in his heart that i will not compromise 
And what we have here is this. We have God's man to reveal a message in the midst of a crisis. You will see that the king now has a dream, but the king has forgotten his dream. And he's trying to figure out what happened because he was so agitated and so upset. So at the time, at the perfect time, God put Daniel in a position to reveal a message in the midst of a crisis. My friend, today we are living in a crisis. God needs people like you and I to stand for him, to preach the truth, the message to be preached in the middle of crisis. So he's not only a messenger of God, but he is a man in the midst of a crisis. You and I, my friend, we are all in the middle of crises today. Let's learn how Daniel now will be used by God, Lord willing, next week. I hope you're enjoying these lessons like I do, as I do. May God richly bless us, shall we pray. Heavenly Father, we come into thy presence and we ask you, Lord, to teach us your word, enable us to have this uncompromising stand in a compromising world. And so we would be used by you in the time of crisis. The world needs your message. The world needs the scriptures. Heavenly Father, churches have stopped preaching the word. They're telling stories. They're making people laugh. It's a comedy show. But Lord, you need to raise people to preach the truth in the time, in the midst of crisis. Use us, Lord, and help us to stand in an uncompromising way. We pray in the name of Jesus. Amen.